Hey fellow pipe smokers, smoking briar coming at ya. And I'm sitting outside here on the back porch and I've been fooling around with my camera a little bit, kind of changing the different ways it, it um, shoots video. So I'm not really sure how well this image is gonna, gonna be, but I figured I'd give it a try anyways and see how it came out. But um, the purpose of this video, um, the other day I watched a video from, from Colin Kelly and um, he was wondering if high-end pipes, um, whether you're just paying for the function of the pipe or whether you're paying for the name of the carver or the manufacturer of the pipe. And I thought that um, I would talk about that a little bit today. Um, I'd made a video last year um, about a you know similar similar subject about you know how to buy briar pipes and things like that but I'm just gonna give my opinion um, on what I think um, about buying pipes uh, especially high-end pipes kinda go through and explain some of the differences um, to a lot of guys that may not know I'm sure most of the um, avid regular pipe smokers are well well aware of everything I'm gonna say but um, I'm just going to do this as a kind of review in case some people don't know. So let's get started with it. Um, the basics of, of all pipes, of course, is to, to get the most enjoyable and flavorable smoke that you can from the tobacco you're using. Now this right here, of course, everybody knows what these are. These are Missouri Mersham corn cob pipes. And you'd be hard pressed to find anybody that smokes a pipe that will tell you that one of these does not smoke well because they all smoke very well. Um, you can pick these up online or at your local shop usually for around a ten dollar bill. Um, I've seen these things last for years and years. Um, if you take care of them just like any other pipe you'll get many years of service. They just have this cheap plastic stem that a lot of people bite through this um, you can buy these replacement bits on eBay, I think, for under a dollar um, or any of the places that sell corn cob pipes. Um, you know, they come, in, they come in this amber color or black. Um, you can also buy these uh, from places like customcorncobs.com and they also have acrylic uh, bits that you can use to replace these and they call those forever, forever stems. Um, so there's a pipe right there for $10 that will smoke any tobacco and give you a fantastic smoke um, once you get past the initial four or five smokes and the corn flavor goes away. Um, these have a fantastic draw to them. Um, the air holes and the stems are huge. If you don't put the filter in there, the airflow is fantastic, which is one of the key factors in smoking a pipe. Um, you want a lot of airflow. So, there's a pipe, like I said, $10 bill, fantastic smoker. Now we're going to move up the scale just a little bit. This is what you would call a basket pipe. This is about a $30 pipe. It's briar. It has an acrylic, I'm sorry, pardon me, it has a vulcanite stem on it, okay? And a lot of guys like vulcanite because they say it's got a softer feel to it um, in, in the mouth when you're um, clenching the pipe. Um, vulcanite is made of a hard rubber material um, and I'm sure that everyone that's owned a vulcanite uh, stem has had it turn green on them <clears throat> and that's the oxid oxidization from the from the rubber when it meets the air. If you leave these in the sun, if you put your pipes by a window and the sun beats on these they will turn green almost like they're covered with algae. Um, I'm not a big fan of them. Um, some people, they do say that they're easier to hold in the teeth, less, ab less ab abrasive. Um, and of course, it's like I said, it's briar. Um, and then moving on, here is a typical Savinelli mid-grade pipe. You can pick this pipe up for about a hundred bucks. Um, I'm I'm kind of, I like Savinelli. Um, Savinelli is the everyday working man's pipe. It's Peterson, same thing, same category. Um, Savinelli and Peterson both have higher end pipes. 
but these guys right here, these $100 range pipes, um, you know, this is the famous Matches 860 Friday Savinelli right here. Um, again, briar pipe, a little bit fancier, got some different, you know, different woodwork going on here. A um, little bit of a gold band, not real gold obviously, but the stem is the major difference. And they call this a lucite stem. Um, lucite and acrylic are interchangeable. Um, they're both a hard plastic. Um, a lot of pipe smokers will say that these are not as comfortable to hold in the mouth as the vulcanite because the vulcanite is a rubber. This is actually a hard, real hard plastic. Um, the lucite you can do more with. That's where your fancy swirls and stuff like this stem. That's where, where they get, you know, that's the material that they use when they make a stem like that. Um, and that's, that's your lucite. Okay. Um, again, around the $100 range. So we've gone from a $10 pipe to like a $30 pipe to a $100 pipe. Again, Savinelli Briar, okay. Um, this pipe here is one I've recently picked up. You guys are follow my channel, you all see me get this pipe. Uh, this is a Sir Jacopo pipe made in Italy, just like the Savinelli. Only difference is this is a hand carved pipe. Okay, the other pipes that I showed you guys are all machine made. This is the only pipe out of the four that is actually made by hand that a carver actually sits down at a bench and carves this pipe by hand. Okay, the stem material right here is acrylic, just like the Savinelli. It's the same material, only in black instead of the swirl. There's absolutely no difference between this material on this pipe, which is a $300 pipe. There's absolutely no difference between the acrylic on this stem than there is on that Savinelli pipe, okay? But again, it's briar and just an acrylic stem, like I said. So you're saying to yourself, okay, what? why am I paying $200 more for this pipe than I would pay for this pipe? Well, besides the size and the, and the amount of briar, that being eliminated, okay, um, what you're paying for in a high-end pipe like this is you're paying for better briar and you're paying for an independent pipe carver to sit down and do this by hand okay all these other pipes like this Savinelli right here okay and this basket pipe right here all these pipes these are machine made there's videos on YouTube I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have seen them if you haven't check them out there's plenty of videos on YouTube about how Savinelli pipes are made and if you watch how these pipes are made on those videos, you'll see guys sitting around on the floor with a huge pile of briar blocks in front of them. And the first thing they do is they just throw them. They throw them into different bins and they sort them out per, you know, in, in grades. Um, different grades of briar so that they can sort these out to make certain types of pipes. The next step is they go into the factory and people will sort them out again to decide whether they're going to be a rusticated pipe like this or a sandblast pipe or they're going to leave it alone because it has really nice grain in it and then it'll be a smooth grain pipe okay you're going to pay more money for better grain that's why when you always see the smooth pipes with the outstanding grain i should have brought an example with me um, when you see a pipe like that the nicer grain the tighter the grain the straight up and down flame grain that you hear so much about the bird's eye grain that you see, you're going to pay more money for that. Compared to a pipe like this that's just thrown into a machine and tumbled around and the result is just a regular sandblast or uh, rustication. Same thing with this Sir Jacopo. Okay? This is all done in a machine. The carver carves the pipe out, gets it to where he wants it. This is done by machine. Some of it is actually done with gouges. That's where you're going to pay money too. If a carver has to sit at a bench and actually put a gouge, you know, and put gouges and, and do this by hand, you're going to pay more money because you're paying for the carver's time. Whereas pipes like these, they throw them in a machine, they sandblast them, or they rusticate them by machine. You're going to see things like pits and uneven carving, stuff like that. Um, the drilling may not be right. It could be way off on, you know, because this, they put this on a machine, 
zip, zap, boom, out the door, next, and they just throw them. And they'll throw them into different bins, it's just an assembly line. There's no real care taken in how they make these pipes. These are all drilled by machine, and if they hit them good, and if they're on center, fine. If they're not, if they're off, that's, oh well. You know, and that's what you're paying for. Whereas a pipe like this, the carver actually takes the time and drills the holes by hand, they do this stuff, they line it up perfectly, you know, they, they do this by, you know, by hand and they take their time with it and the pipes like this will actually pass a pipe cleaner whereas some of these type of pipes, even this little pipe right here, sometimes you can't even get a pipe cleaner through because the drilling is way off. And if you have a pipe with bad drilling, you're going to have a bad smoker. So the things that we're paying for at higher end pipes are number one, you're paying for a better quality briar. It may have been aged for 10 years or 15 years uh, in the basement or in a barn somewhere where the carver just leaves them there and, and doesn't even think about them for 10, 15 years. Uh, High-end briar that's been aged a long time is going to be obviously much more expensive. Uh, the second thing you're paying for is, is the briar got a lot of pits in it, sand pits, things like that. If, the, if it has to be uh, turned into a rusticated pipe like this, that usually means it's not a real nice piece of briar that could be used as a, as a smooth, you know, where you can see the grain. You're going to pay more for a pipe that has smooth flame grain or decent bird's eye. All these things come into effect when you're, when you're paying for, for your pipes. Um, the third thing you're going to pay more money for is, again, is the stems. Vulcanite stems are cheap. They cost hardly nothing compared to an acrylic stem that costs a lot more. So you're going to pay more if a pipe has an acrylic stem than if it has a vulcanite stem. The next thing you're going to pay more money for is like we were talking about is whether it's made by a machine, an assembly line where they just run them through like potato chips or if a carver actually has to sit at a bench and put his time and expertise into making the pipe. Now I know Colin Kelly had mentioned Dunhill. Um, he wants to know if these pipes are worth the six, seven hundred thousand dollar price tags they put on them. In my opinion, absolutely not. Again, that's just my opinion. Okay, you're paying for a name. Um, Dunhill Briar is not any better than any of the other briar that a decent carver, um, a higher end pipe, pipe carver would use. Um, it's Mediterranean Briar, most of it. Um, you know, it's it's seasoned for for many years. It's in it's beautiful, you know, stuff, and, and it's in good shape. It's not the junk that they use to make these basket pipes, but you're paying for that Dunhill name. Um, it's just like you can drive a Cadillac or you can drive a Chevy, same company. You know, you're just paying for the prestige of of driving a Cadillac. Same way with a Dunhill, you're paying for that name. Um, there's pipe carvers here on YouTube, um, independent pipe carvers. I'm not going to mention you know specific names because there's so many of them, and they sell outstanding, beautiful pipes in the $200 range, and they put their heart and souls into these pipes, and they're absolutely gorgeous. You know they they use the top of the line materials, um, and one more thing about materials, sometimes you're going to pay more for a pipe if it has. Like, the, like this gold band right here, okay, on this pipe. If this were real gold, um, or like sometimes uh, Peterson, for example, Peterson actually uses real sterling silver bands in some of their pipes. Um, Peter Jeppesen is another carver who does a lot with, you know, different metals, precious metals in his pipes. Uh, could be gold, silver, um, things like that. If that's added to the pipe, it's obviously also going to increase the amount you're going to pay for that pipe. Um, but back to the subject of carvers, you know, these guys, the independent carvers, they take the time, they make each stem and each piece of briar, they, they, they take their time with it, they, they make it themselves, they carve it themselves, they do all the work themselves, and they can put these pipes out for a couple hundred dollars. Um, why would you guys want to take and put six, seven hundred dollars into a Dunhill? And I'm not sure on this, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I probably am, but I've heard this. I've heard Dunhill is starting to become more mass-produced and, and actually made by more machinery than by actual hands-on from artists and pipe carvers. Um, you know, I don't want to badmouth Dunhill because a lot of people love them, but I just think you're paying for that name. 
Um, and then you also have a lot of people um, who don't make the pipes themselves. They're not a carver or anything. They just put their name on the pipes and they sell them and you're paying for their name. Um, you know, they're not even made by that person, but you're paying for, you know, the name of, of somebody to, that's got their name on a pipe. It's kind of like the, the uh, uh, Michael Jordan sneakers, you know, stuff like that, because they say Air Jordans on them. You're paying an outrageous price for them uh, just because of the name. Same way with pipes. So my advice is, and it always has been, um, I don't recommend these basket pipes for everyday use. Okay, I just, they're just cheap. They're, they're not, the briar has not been aged maybe two years. You've got a, a chintzy stem that's not going to really last. You know, these are just, a, you know, a, a good yard mowing pipe or banging around or a pipe for beginners to see if you really like the hobby or not. Um, I wouldn't recommend these for everyday use. You know, I don't get very many of these. This is a pipe I've had forever. Um, and I certainly don't recommend going out and dropping a fortune on pipes like these. This was a pipe that I've wanted for my whole life, so that's why I did this. But what I recommend, guys, middle of the road, okay? Go out and get yourself a decent pipe from a reputable maker. Um, Savinelli, Peterson, um, Nearup. These are all pipes that they have different grades. You can get low-end Savinelli's in the $60 to $70 range. You can get Signature Series Savinelli's in the $500 range. What I would recommend anybody that's looking for a decent quality pipe that doesn't want to waste your money is buy in the middle. You know, this is a $100 pipe. This could be a little nicer. I mean, you could get up into the $150 to $200 range and have a real good quality briar that's, that's you know, made with good seasoned briar. Um, and you can feel the weight too. That's also going to tell you how much, the, how long the briar's been seasoned, um, compared to a pipe that is like a real heavy feeling pipe where the water hasn't been drawn out and the pipes, you know, the briar's not aged a lot. So that's my my theory. By middle of the road, um, I had a very very in depth conversation with one time years and years ago um, with J M Boswell, as a matter of fact. And he told me back then that any pipe you're spending more than $200 for, you're either paying for the name or you're paying for the extra fancy, you know, whatever they may put on the pipe. Um, you know, like, I, like we were talking about the gold or the sterling silver, things like that. So, um, and always remember one thing. Okay, any pipe that you buy, very basic. Tobacco goes in here, smoke comes out here. There's not really a lot of, you know, rocket scientists here. As long as this is drilled nice and straight and a pipe cleaner will pass and it's got a good airway to it, you're going to get a good smoke. So that's my, uh, that's my opinion. Those are my theories for what it's worth. I hope this helps some of you guys. Um, I'm going to end this video because it's getting a little long-winded, but I just wanted to uh, put that out there for you guys and... I hope uh, maybe some of the new guys have learned something from it. And um, again, if you can add anything to this, please feel free to leave me a comment. And I, uh, as always, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And have a great day.